Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nikos Burial and today we're going to be making pasta or to be more precise, fusilli pasta. I figured this would be a fun little exercise where we take a look at how we could model a pasta like this. And later on, I'll be diving into some uh, the new subsurface scatterings through translucency in V-ray materials. That will probably be the next episode. And after that, we will be looking into mass effects and how to drop our pasta into a jar or a glass jar or something like that. And then so that we can use it in our interior visualizations or just as a product visualization or whatever we want to do. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm thinking about when I want to make something like this is obviously I need to get a reference photo or multiple reference photos if needed. And the first thing I'm seeing is that the pasta itself is divided into three and then it's twisted upon itself. And there are some variables. It twists a little bit less here in the bottom than it does maybe in the top and so on. Then obviously they're all probably kind of unique and different, but we will just be making one um, fairly high poly. Um, but you know, so we can do a nice close up with the subsurface scattering and all of that. We can always, you know, do an optimize on it later on if we wanted to and, and all that. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, change my settings, actually, because my 3ds Max got um, uh, reset not that long ago. Um, so let's change this to centimeters, metric centimeters. So that's fine. Good. So we make a box. We can actually start by making this fairly small because I'm just making the center. So the absolute center of where these three will come out from. So I'm thinking it needs to be something along lines of one millimeter or 0.1 centimeter. So with that made, we can make an edible poly. <clears throat> we can uh, turn off on and off brackets if they're in the way you can't almost see them right now so it doesn't really matter too much but if we take these two so brackets on and off is shift j if we take these two polygons we can collapse them and the same with these two sorry i said polygons i meant uh, vertices and we can start looking at what we have so from here i will select each side but not the front and not the you know, not the top and not the bottom, so all three sides. So now that we have this triangle, we can extrude them out by maybe half a centimeter or something like that. Um, but add up on polygon instead of, you know, as a local, um, so not as a group, not as local normals, but by polygon. Um, and, you know, roughly 0.5 centimeters, I think. After that, we can increase the height of it. Um, and since it's zeroed, so it's zero in our scene, I can set the top here to maybe four centimeters or something like that, just to get a rough idea of the shape on the uh, of the size. So the scale should be right from the beginning. So I don't need to worry about that later on and resetting scale and all of that. Um, I would create a few segments, maybe just I don't know, ten, and so that we have enough segments to actually work with uh, because we want to create a bit of waviness to this. I want a few segments on this side as well. So I will connect maybe just, you know, something like this. So again, it's going to be end up being fairly high poly because we will turbo smooth this. Remember to uh, rename your object. So it's not called box one, but just, you know, pasta. I call it CS01 because I am going to end up duplicating this a lot. Um, so yeah, I'll start with that. Good. We can add a twist modifier and see how this goes already. I'm kind of liking what we're seeing here. We can use a bit of bias so it doesn't twist as much in the bottom. And then just, you know, correct it as, as much as you'd like. We can add a turbo smooth modifier to see how it looks. And we get something along these lines. Before the turbo smooth, maybe, we can do an... FFD free cubed. Um, go to control points and we can just, you know, take this up a little bit, maybe the opposite here so it does more of like this. And then we can check the turbo smooth after that. 
and yeah, you know, work a little bit with the, maybe the, um, you know, the different, different values and so on. We can move this around so it doesn't twist as much up here as it does up here and, you know, just stretching it out a little bit. Let's get a bit tall for that maybe, so. Maybe something like that. So now we actually have a pretty decent pasta. If we wanted to have more polygons, we could easily just up the iterations. Um, but right now we have, if we press seven, you see we have 500 polygons. And with two iterations on Turbo Smooth, we'll end up with 8,000 polygons, which is kind of a lot, I think. Um, but, you know, cause we are gonna duplicate this. We are gonna have probably at least a few, few thousands. So depending on what you want, you know, you can just scale on the iterations depending on how close we get to it. If we don't get really that close, like if we get out here, one iteration is more than fine. If you get even further away, we can just do a smooth instead. So the smoothing groups will be um, better um, and probably auto smooth it by at least 45 degrees, maybe 60. So something like that and just you know if we see it from here it'll be totally fine so you know we can keep the smoothing um the auto smooth does the same thing so as soon as that's that goes on it's it looks the same but now at least it'll work in you know different kinds of levels of details um for our for our needs um depending on what we want we can always um put on render iterations so that it only applies the iterations from the turbo smooth as soon as we start rendering. And if we don't render, uh, our viewports will just see, you know, 500 polygons per pasta, which is, you know, probably manageable for uh, most people. All right, now that we have our pasta, I would actually start creating a bit of the scene that we're gonna be using for doing all the lighting so that we can test the texturing and all of that. So we just set up a maybe, I don't know, 500 by 500. So it'll be fairly large. Uh, we could also start making the jar. Let's just change the, add a custom color to something like this. Say okay. That needs to be a bit darker, I think. It's all, you know, preferences. Add that color, assign random color, say okay, and something like that. And we can do the same for pasta. Again, it's a matter of preference and taste don't have to do this at all. I just don't like having it to, um, if it gets to, to the random colors and so on, I, I don't know, I think they get a little bit weird, so something like that. Great. So now that we have that, we um, have a plane, which we would call ground. We can make that into a shadow catcher, uh, like we covered in the video with this, the last video of the Sonos speaker. Um, so if you want to cheat and look at how I did that, you can just jump to that tutorial now. Um, but otherwise we will be creating later on in the series of this series, sorry, I'll be creating this as a shadow catcher as well. So the next thing we could quickly do is create a cylinder to create the jar itself. Um, we won't, no, no, it's not. We don't have any needs to make this too big, so press F4 so we can see how many sides we have. Uh, 18 is more than enough. Maybe make it 20 high, and just take some round numbers and maybe 8. Make this into an edible poly. Create a connect. You could also use Swift loop to make the loops easier, so Alt 1 to create the loops when you want. Um, same goes for here, and scale this in, something like this. Double click here to uh, get the edge loop. Maybe before that, we can go to the polygon down here if I hide unselected. We can hold shift and scale inwards to do an inset and make another inset so that we can collapse the last part. That'll make this easier to, you know, double, double click on the edge here to create the, to, um, select loop. Same goes for here, and maybe just those two to begin with. Do a fast chamfer of some sorts. Maybe something like this. Same goes for this. Can chamfer this about. 
too much, just something like that. And again, this side we can delete because we'll be using a shell modifier to get the, the thickness. And, you know, we don't want it to be too thick, so maybe just 0.2. Here we can do a edit poly, so we don't need to collapse all of our stacks and so on if we wanted to. So we could take this and this and do a chamfer modifier. So that we round that edge and, you know, most of it should look okay from now on. If we wanted to, we could try and make something, it won't be the best solution, but we could create a helix. Uh, if we center our object first, it'll make it a little bit easier. We could create a helix, so something like this. And we could set the both radiuses here at five centimeters, probably. Maybe a little bit more. And center it it up so now if we go to rendering and enable it render in renderer we can check um, the size of this um, so we can change the height to something maybe a little bit more like this and the radius you know get one of them right and it should be fine press a four so we can easily see so at you know, just over five, half of it is going through, which is kind of what I want. So we want this to be you know, roughly there. It should be all right. It's not perfect, but we have um, the amount of, um, you know, segments we get on it might be, also we kind of want more turns, so. Maybe do three, three full turns. That's fine. Go to the jar and attach the helix. And as soon as we do that with the surface moon, it'll round off these edges. But as long as we get to a few here, you know, it'll be fine. It's not perfect here by any means, but we could just take, um, I can select this part, that part, turn this on. If we wanted, we could um, in here, then shift and drag this a little bit just to um, help it end a little bit better. Uh, so we can collapse the last one. I don't think we need to move it. That's probably gonna be fine. Sure, it'll be a glass material, so not really much need to go crazy here. It's just to make it so it doesn't obviously look too bad. Scale this inwards with shift. Collapse the last part. It's my collapse. It's disappeared check that it actually goes in there. Um, if we need to select the whole face again here, just select this middle vertex, hold down control and press uh, polygon. And then you can um, convert your selection. So I can grow it once, put on the turbo smooth so I can see what's happening. And then, you know, take it in the last bit here. Something like that. I will end this episode here and stay tuned for the next one where we'll be looking into a little bit of lighting and depending on how far we will get, I will start on materials, but um, no promises on how far we get with that. So stay tuned for the next few episodes for materials, translucency with soft surface scattering, and later on um, uh, putting a lot of pasta in a jar and all of that good things. All right, see you later. Bye.